is not about what you think should happen, but what you think will happen. And I want to know if you're an optimist or a pessimist when it comes to climate change and coronavirus. So I think the optimistic take um, is that coronavirus, one, has shown you know, the limits of neoliberalism. We've really seen the damage that it does to have a state with no capacity to respond to crises. It also has you know, brought about, uh, I would hope, an awareness that we as a society need to look at future risks and deal with them in the present instead of putting them off because i think many people will, will come to recognize that we could have foreseen a pandemic and the government didn't prepare because you know our politics is structured um, to only really consider short-term problems the pessimist though says that we're going to have a massive recession what often happens in times of economic crises is that governments say we can't afford the luxury of discussing green economies and climate change. What we need to do is get the economy moving as quickly as possible, jobs, jobs, jobs. And that means that we can't afford to, you know, tax heavily emissions. We can't afford to have a green transition at this point in time because the short term requirements, which are more urgent, more electorally uh, urgent, again, is is growth. So, I mean, where, where do you sit on those two, on, on the end of that spectrum? Well, I think both of those are plausible positions. Um, I, I don't think they uh, need necessarily evolve passively. We have a role in this, in determining um, what happens politically. That is what we're supposed to do. That is, that is in a way, what, what um, um, d democracies live off, is people's willingness to step up and say, this is what we want and we don't want that. So, you know, let's not just sit back and see what happens. Let's mobilise for the change we want. But of course, there's a real danger. There's a real danger that, you know, um, they'll just try to reinvent the bad old dirty economy as quickly as they possibly can. But, you know, I think this could be a, a real moment of change where we that whole story, oh, we can't act, you know, governments are really weak and powerless, there's very little we can do, people would never take it. That story has just completely fallen apart. You know, just to take one example, you know, for years now we've been told, oh, what a pity about homelessness. You know, we would love everyone to have a home, but it just can't be done, you know. It's a real shame, and, you know, we, the government, are trying really hard, but, you know, the homeless will always be with us. Suddenly, pandemic hits, Bang, everyone, everyone should be housed instantly. We need to find homes for everybody because otherwise they'll spread disease. I said, oh, so it can be done. Well, so all those years when you were telling us it couldn't be done, you were lying to us. It was complete bollocks. And we see that with issue after issue, a whole series of issues where they say it couldn't be done. We can't break austerity. There's no alternative. This is the only way to do. Governments can't borrow beyond a certain point. You know, we just can't do it. It's impossible. Suddenly it's possible. They think, okay, if it's possible for the pandemic, it is possible for all the other issues that we face. And we must use that knowledge again and again and again. And we must constantly confront governments with it, saying, you said it couldn't be done, but when you needed to, you did it. It's not a question of economics. It's not a question of physics. It's a question of political will. And, and it's us through mobilising who must put the government in a position where it has no choice but to exercise that political will to change society for the better. I'm going to bring in Jay Sol now, who has tweeted on the hashtag Tisky Sour. George speaks so much sense and is incredibly eloquent. Thank you very much for getting him on. What books would he recommend to read during lockdown? Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, well, I, I, I've been reading <laughs> I've actually been reading about soil ecology I've, I've, I've my lockdown project is to learn as much as I possibly can so I've been reading some very boring textbooks on soil ecology but you know relevant to this debate um, Kate Rayworth Donut Economics you know is a really key text I'm sure many many of your um, viewers um, have already read it um, I, um, I I mean I think there's you know a huge very interesting online literature developing very rapidly in response to the pandemic. Uh, and every day now, I'm coming across really fascinating stuff, um, you know, on various websites, whether it's The Conversation or, or whether it's Nevada Media. Or, you know, there, there's, there's a huge amount of stuff which is tracking our evolving conversation. And in a way, it makes a lot of what we were discussing before almost irrelevant. I mean, obviously, it's an underpinning but it, it, it gives us um, a, a sort of chance 
to really rethink things in, a, in an even more radical way than we were doing before. I mean, I'm looking at what I was writing before this, and it was all sort of hopeful. Well, I don't think we need to be hopeful anymore. We can see that actually massive change can just happen just like that. We can turn mm. economies around in a sixpence if we need to. So it's almost as if we now need a completely new literature to say we're past the age of hope. We're now in the hope in, in the era of of just doing it. And here's what we can just do. Let's just do it because governments have proven that it can be done when it needs to be. Mm.